Ableton Live 12 is here. Hi, I'm Peter Kern for CDM. Here are 12 quick tips for things to try the first time you start up Live 12. Number one, change the color. There are some gorgeous color themes to try out in the new version. They've all been optimized for contrast and vision, so they are easier on your eyes. You'll also find some tone controls and light and dark options just under the default theme. So what you do is you select the default theme and then those options will work for you. You can even follow the uh, OS as it shifts from day to night. Number two, apply and learn about tuning. Now, uh, CDM broke this story, so you're finally free of only having to use 12-tone equal temperament for everything. And they've gone all in, so you can learn about Arabic music, you can learn about Persian music, uh, along with some other tuning systems, and you can bring in your own Scala files. So you just double-click these things. They should work with all of Live's internal instruments. Uh, many of the effect parameters even work. But uh, if you want to use third-party plugins, they're going to need MPE, MIDI Polyphonic Expression, support. And one little tip, you might need to right-click those devices to enable MPE mode, and that allows them to start receiving pitch. Otherwise, what you'll hear is that they'll just be still stuck in their standard tuning or 12-tone equal temperament. You should also go and check out tuning.ableton.com. That's a place where you can learn about tuning systems, explore them interactively with sound all right in your browser, and then create your own tunings. You don't even need a live license to use this feature, so it's something to share with everybody. Number three, modify your returns. Finally, you can drag around returns and duplicate them the same way that you can with tracks. Number four, sound similarity search. This is machine learning powered. You can choose any file in the browser, any file in your project, and right click and choose show similar sounds. And from your library, you'll see audio that seems to be related based on some pre-trained machine learning. Uh, it is an interesting way to kind of find other audio. Sometimes it finds related audio. Sometimes it finds stuff that maybe isn't so related, but that can also be inspirational. So sometimes when it doesn't work as expected is when it's actually at its best. Number five, apply probability to a group of notes. So previously you could go note by note and adjust probability. Now watch what happens if I drag across notes in the clip detail view. I can apply probabilities to that whole group. That can be a way to spice up your MIDI clips. Number six, try a Euclidean generator. Euclidean generators it comes from a mathematical technique for developing equally spaced rhythms, although it's very close to traditional clave rhythms. Now it's finally in the clip detail view in Ableton Live. You can see you can adjust it here. It's built in Max for Live, and if I if I go down here, you'll see that there is an empty spot for a Max for Live generator where you just fill in your own Max patch. So Max users, I'm really excited to see what you do with this feature. Number seven, transformers. Well, my favorite transformer has to be the time warp, and you'll see what it does here. I can just kind of pick different uh, start points, end points, and get a scaler for speed. There's some other features here, but you can have clips that are magically speeding up, slowing down, doing interesting stuff, getting off the usual repetitive grid. And once again, inside the transformers, yeah, Max for Live users, you're going to be able to create your own transformations here. This is also a really easy way to get into Max for Live because it's a little simpler. You don't have to build an entire device. You can just try out a really basic idea. It's, it's good for those of us who are not the best Max patchers, but want to tinker around. It's great for hackers. Number eight, try feedback in Roar. Roar is worth its own look. It's a really great coloration tool, wave shaping tool, distortion. It's capable of lots of different features, but I'm especially fond of the feedback mode and particularly the fact that it can be time synced. So you can set the amount and then also set a synced time so that your distortion effects are synced up to the clock. Lots of interesting possibilities there. Number nine, Robert Henke's granulator has gotten an upgrade. There's a ton of new stuff in here, but the easiest place to start is, let's just listen to these two new engines. And I'm gonna be quiet for a second, and let's just hear how they sound.
Number 10, capture variations in the performance pack. The performance pack, as the name implies, is great for live performance, and you should go check out IFTA's full-length video and the coverage that we did before to get started with this. But here's an idea for how to use this, not so much for performance, but for finishing tracks. If you're like me, you sometimes get lost in tweaking knobs inside a session and you don't really finish the track and kind of come up with an arrangement. Here's an idea. As you're tweaking stuff, stuff sounds really good. Capture that as a variation. Move the knob some more, give into that, uh, lean into that desire, and um, then save another variation. What we can do is now I have a series of variations that I can use to assemble a track arrangement. It's a great way to actually finish some music. Number 11, save custom browser views. Oh, I've got a lot of plugins. Do you have a lot of plugins? Now we have a different way of looking at plugins, but here's the thing you might not have spotted right away. Check out this plus icon here. Once I click on some categories I want or filters I want, which I can also hone in on this, this edit window here and do the same in different views in the browser, click plus and you can save that as a custom browser view. So if you have something that you're constantly returning to, a certain set of plugins, a certain search, now you can save it and bring it up at any time. It's a great time saver. Number 12, check out the resonators inside Meld. Well, Meld is already a, a, a toy box. There's all of these different oscillator types. That's a ton of fun to play around with, but don't miss the resonators inside the, the filter section. You know, in addition to Redux and Comb, which makes some interesting sounds, and Vowel, you get the plate resonator and membrane resonator. And these uh, little icons next to them indicate that they will also adapt to the tuning system that you have active. That's hopefully something that we see elsewhere in live and future updates, but it's already there in the plate and membrane resonator. These are not exactly the same resonators as you find in some of the existing Ableton instruments and the stuff from AAS sounds a little different. Uh, seems to be a new sound model, uh, but it's capable of a lot of really cool sounds. So that's it for now. I hope that gets you started. You'll find the full list in the description. I will see you on the internet. Let me know what else you want to see. This is Peter for CDM.